Hey everybody, I'm Sam Brace. I am the product education manager for Cloudinary and I'm joined here with my friend. Hi everybody, my name is Marissa. Um, I'm here part of the developer support team. So when you guys open support tickets, chances are you might be talking to me directly. <laughs> That's absolutely right. And one of the tickets that we have commonly received, especially throughout Cloudinary's history is dealing with transformations, better understanding what happens when we take certain actions and if a transformation is created. Now, of course, a transformation is really any time that you are creating image processing within Cloudinary. So uploading content, as we'll show a little bit later, that creates transformations, but also when you're trying to optimize those images for the web or add some aesthetic changes, so maybe borders or backgrounds or adding certain types of filters, also, those would be considered to be transformations as well. Now, why is this such an important topic? Well, it's really important to kind of understand how we're counting your quotas because, you know, a lot of times certain users will generate huge spikes and they don't really know why. Or maybe sometimes their bill is higher or they went over in their account and they're just like, what the heck happened here? So we just want to kind of demystify what transformations are and really just get you guys going so that you can use this optimally. Absolutely. And one thing that we found to be helpful is we're actually going to put a transformation counter in this recording. So if you have questions about certain actions that Marissa or I take throughout it, we have this little transformation counter that's going to be right in the top left corner of your screen. And that way you can keep track of every single time that transformation is counted and also when it wasn't. So keep track of that as we're going through this today. Now, Marissa, uploading content, let's start with that. Okay. Now, when you're uploading a piece of content, does this count as a transformation? Yes, it does. And that's something that everybody really needs to take note of because they assume that, oh, I'm just uploading, it doesn't really count towards anything. Um, so when people migrate their resources, when you first open a Cloudinary account or you just want to upload resources a huge amount later, you're like, oh my God, what happened to transformations? Um, so it's, it's really important to note that each asset that you upload does count towards your transformation. So with these uploads, of course, uploading an image, that would count as a transformation. Uploading a video, which you can do with your binary console, that also counts. But what about files that are called raw files? So raw files, actually want to make note of, we don't count that as a transformation. Since that's something that we don't necessarily display for you, we just store it. Uh, we actually don't count that as a transformation. And you know, you can't really adjust, or you can't apply transformations two raw files, so that wouldn't make sense for us to count that. And what would be an example of a raw file? Um, so an example of a raw file could be like an Excel sheet, it could be maybe an HTML file, CSS file, um, all types of different things like that. And that makes sense because Cloudinary wouldn't be transforming those types of files generally. You're just using yeah. it strictly for the storage space. Exactly. Now what's also interesting is that based on certain file types because of just the sheer amount of animations that are involved with them or the amount of data that's associated with them, they may count as more than one transformation. The first example is animated GIFs because once you upload it to Cloudinary, that's going to count as that one transformation. But let's say that it has a lot of frames to it. So you want to make sure when you're uploading an animated GIF that you remember when you initially upload it, we do count that as one transformation. And then for every 10 frames, we're going to count an additional transformation. So let's say you have 20 frames. That's going to be one transformation for the actual upload. It's going to be another transformation for the first 10 frames. And then it's going to be one more for the additional 10 frames counting to 20. Now, one thing that Clownery does that I think is really cool is you can convert those animated GIFs to become a video, like an MP4 as an example. Yes. In that situation, what is the frame to transformation ratio? Uh, so in that, we do count them a little differently. It depends on what video you want to uh, convert it to. So let's say we have SD videos and then we have HD videos. So that really depends on the different number of frames. Um, so one thing you want to remember is one second equals two transformations. Mm -hmm. um, and then for HD videos, one second equals four transformations. So you really got to count that um, depending on the length that it, it could add up a little bit. Um, so you definitely want to keep track of that. Absolutely correct. And the last 
but not least is PDF files. That's yes. one thing you can definitely store inside of your binary account. Now, of course, that upload of the original document, one transformation, but where do the additional transformations take place? So after that, the additional transformations depend on how many pages are actually in the PDF. Um, so you really want to make sure you count that as well. So for PDF files, it's, of course, once again, um, one transformation per upload. And then after every 10 pages, we also count an additional transformation. So it's kind of similar to the animated GIFs, every 10 frames, but here it's every 10 pages. But now we're going to move over to transforming the content. So what this means is if I wanted to change the width or change the height or maybe add some of our other various transformations that we have, there's literally thousands, this is something where they would count typically as a single transformation for each one that I add. So if I wanted to change the width to 200 pixels wide and then change the height to 200 pixels wide, if I added those individually, those would be each one transformation. One for the width, one for the height. But if I wanted to add them all at once because it's only processing it together, then that would count as one as well. So thinking about it from that perspective, if you go through and add all of your transformations in one set, that would count as one. But if you do them in a piecemeal format, then those each would count as one transformation. Yes. Is that correct? Yes, that is correct. Oh, good. <laughs> good. <laughs> and something you want to remember too is sometimes people get a little bit confused about chain transformations. Um, so please note that no matter how complex a transformation is, uh, we are only going to count it as one. So let's say you want to add an overlay and then adjust the height and width of the overlay. And then you want to change the gravity of the overall photo. There's all these different change transformations you can do, but that will only count as one. And what's also good to note is that there's something called eager transformations, which is where you're adding the transformation when you're uploading the image as well as there's what we call on the fly transformations is where you're adding it when someone is actually, when the image has already been uploaded to Cloudinary. Both of those still are going to have the same type of transformation counts. So if you apply it eagerly or if you apply it on the fly, both are gonna be counted as one transformation set in that situation. Good. So <laughs> now one thing that is interesting and we, I learned this myself when I was working with Marissa is that if I were to change the order of these transformations, that actually counts as a new transformation. Yes. Why is that? Uh, so we kind of look in our own data space and we kind of see like, oh, does this image already exist? Do we need to regenerate it? And so when you change the order of the transformations, we're gonna look for that specific transformation that you gave. And so if you change the order, we're not gonna see it as being the same. So we will have to regenerate a whole different image. That is completely true. And what's also really good to note here is that because it's that one-time generation, let's say that it gets a thousand views, that has no impact on your transformations at all because it's one transformation that's happened and just a lot of people are receiving it. No additional generation has to be done by Cloudinary to process that image with that transformation set. Yes, just keep in mind that that will then count towards your bandwidth. So that's something that people get a little confused about. It's okay, so I generated this transformation, but what happens when I view this image again? Does that count as a second transformation? No, it does not. So at that point, you're just going against your bandwidth and not your transformations. All right, so now we've shown basic transformations with content that we've uploaded to our account. But what is fetching and how does this play with transformations? Yeah, so when you want to fetch a, a URL, it essentially means you're going to point to another source and we are going to point to that image and then kind of upload it to your account. But because it's not in your account, it doesn't count as a transformation. No, it doesn't. Which is great. <laughs> yes. But let's say, for example, that I wanted to add a transformation. So like, let's say the same transformation set we had to our originally uploaded dog. You'll notice here that if I were to do something like this, put in a scale and crop it to 200 and 300. If I do it all at once, this does count as a transformation. But to the simple fetching the content and bringing it into our console, as we can see here, that does not count. 
So really the only time that the transformation counter changed was with the transformation of the scaling, the width and the height that we had before. Excellent. Now, an interesting fact is that based on how you are delivering images, some of these image transformations themselves can actually create more than one transformation against your quota. The first one, which I really think is one of the most beneficial transformation options we have at Cloudinary, it does create multiple versions of a file type, and that is F-Auto, meaning automatic format. Now, first of all, as we're saying, this is a very good thing. And mm -hmm. in most scenarios, you do want to be applying F-Auto to your images because it makes sure that it applies the image in the file format that's best suited for that user's browser. So in a lot of cases, WebP is going to be a much smaller file size and more optimized for Chrome users than a JPEG or a PNG or a GIF. And our system would recognize that we're using Chrome and convert it to WebP in those scenarios. Of course, there's other file formats that are other browsers like Internet Explorer, Microsoft Edge, Safari, Firefox, and we're optimized for as well. So the system does that. But why does it create more than one transformation? Yes, so the thing is, once you use F-Auto, we're actually going to create four different transformations. And so it's just like Sam said, depending on what browser the user has um, is using to view the resource, we're going to deliver that format. We're going to detect what, which browser it is, and we're going to deliver that format. So as Sam had said, if the user is using Chrome, we are going to deliver the WebP version. Um, if you're on Internet Explorer, we're going to use the JPEG XR version. And if you're on Firefox, um, it will be whatever you have as the original extension. So for example, if it's just a JPEG, then we will deliver that. Um, so we kind of look and see what the best format to deliver is for that specific browser. So essentially, inside the console, you can just go through and see I can choose format and it gives all the various kinds I can convert it to. But if I choose auto, that's where then our system will determine based on the browser that happens to be there. And if this was a transformation, this counts. And then as those other ones are delivered, then it goes through and creates additional transformations. Yes. So in that aspect, you are kind of, to an extent, giving us control as to what we determine to be the most optimal format to deliver. But what's wonderful about this is if I were to go through and just take a look at this original file, and remember that this is 6.6 .6 megabytes and a JPEG, it has reduced it just with the F-Auto alone down to 4.89, but it did serve it as a WebP. So that is where the transformations take place. Now, Marissa, let's talk about DPR Auto. So what is DPR in general? Uh, so DPR stands for Device Pixel Ratio. And kind of what that means is different phones allow for different amounts of pixels. So let's say you're in iPhone 10. Uh, I believe that uses DPR3. Yeah. And when uh, older generations of the iPhone, they're at DPR2. So kind of what that means is we're going to detect what DPR ratio to actually use when you use DPR Auto. Just similar to F Auto, we're kind of detecting what phone they're using, what browser they're using, and we will decide how many pixels to actually put in there. And of course, if you're using high res, you want more pixels. And so this is kind of a way to determine, oh, okay, they're using this version of iPhone, so we're gonna uh, deliver more pixels and make it more of a high res image. And this is a really nice feature because that way you're not setting it based on what you think all devices would use. We would display it based on the device it's used. Yeah. So, as an example, Marissa, what phone do you have? I have iPhone 10. You have an iPhone 10, so it's, hers is going to display at, when we use DPR Auto at DPR 3. So that way I didn't have to set it to DPR 3, it would just, just display it as that. I also happen to have a recent model of an iPhone, as you can see. And what's nice about that is because that also has a DPR 3 on it, then it doesn't count as additional transformation when I load it. But as we also said, if someone with a lower DPR or a higher DPR than DPR3 loads that content, then those would count as additional transformations. So you may see your transformation count rise, but you also know that your user experience, specifically on mobile for most situations, is going to be that much better for your end users. And that's really what matters. Yes, exactly. 
All right, and the last transformation that can create more than one transformation when you apply it to your assets is W Auto. Now, what is W Auto? So W Auto, uh, it kind of varies, and depending on how responsive your website is, we're gonna generate either more or less um, different transformations. Uh, and that obviously W Auto stands for with Auto. Um, so keep that in mind. So you kind of want, uh, if you want to not have to worry about the size of the screen of your users, so whether they're on a mobile device, whether they're on a tablet, whether they're on a desktop, we'll adjust the width automatically. And we, uh, that's how we can kind of create different uh, sizes for the screen and that will create more transformations. But like I said, depending on how, you, how responsive it's set up, uh, it may create more or less. So with that example, if we were to apply W Auto to our picture of our pug, that would count as one transformation. But then let's say that we have a website that would display it with that original W Auto, and then it's going to then have two additional breakpoints, as you can see here on our screen. One that would take it down to 200 by 300, one that would take us to one to be more of a tablet size, and then one that's the full desktop size. So the full desktop, that counts as one, and once somebody is served the tablet or the mobile version, then the additional transformations come into play. But the total amount of transformations for this image with W Auto would be three, because we have the first, and then we would have two others once someone loads that size on their device. Now, what's great about Cloudinary, among other things, is they have this site that we have helped create called responsivebreakpoints.com. And if I want to figure out how many responsive images I would want to create for my purposes, you can see here with these various sliders and upload tools, I can do that. Plus, it can even render the various image tag examples that I would want to put onto my website for the front end development. So that way we would know how to use those in the most appropriate ways. Now, to our final point. What happens if your quota is high? You realize that you're getting close to the amount of transformations that are allowed as part of your current service plan of Cloudinary. Well, there's lots of things you can do, right? Yeah. But the first thing that you cannot do is delete your image and think that's going to fix the transformation because the processing has already happened. Yes, so you definitely want to keep that in mind. Um, once we've generated it, it's, it's there to stay. Um, and something that you do want to keep in mind while we're speaking of deletions is if you go back and delete a transformation that you've already generated, when you request that again, we are going to see that it's no longer there, so that will count as well. Um, so be very mindful of deleting your transformation. Exactly. And of course, re-uploading an existing image because we're reprocessing it again, that also would count as additional transformation in that case because it's requiring the process. Yeah, exactly. So just don't think you can just delete all of your storage and think that's going to somehow affect your transformations. It affects your storage, but not your transformations. Exactly. Now, second, of course, but it does take a little bit of money, is consider upgrading your plan. If transformations are a very key part of your service and you're going to be creating lots of these, especially if you happen to be a large and upcoming e-commerce site or a, some form of a retail site and you want to be serving lots of various images with breakpoints and DPR adjustments, you might need to have a bigger plan than what you have today. Of course, we have lots of different ways for you to upgrade and of course you can always downgrade if your projects ever change in scope as well. Now, one thing that's really important, I feel like this is something that gets talked about a lot of times that I've seen, is when does my transformation quotas reset? Yes. Yeah, so that's something that people ask us a lot, um, and I answer a lot. Uh, <laughs> so we're trying to let you guys know here. Uh, so you want to make sure that uh, you keep in mind that we do run on a 30-day rolling basis. So what does that mean? It means every single day your quotas will update. So if you generate, I don't know, let's say 20,000 transformations in one day, but you're like, oh, but my billing period ends tomorrow. So that means they're totally going to be reset and be back to zero. That unfortunately is not true. That's right. Uh, so we are, that spike is going to stay until it drops off on the 30th day. So you want to keep that in mind. And what's great is that once that 30th day happens, then it 
does technically somewhat reset in the sense that you are now working off of that area where the peak might have disappeared. But of course, if you have, if it's not just a peak and maybe it's become a plateau or a rising increase, then of course those upgrades are going to be where you're probably going to want to lie to. But if it's just a hot period and people are actively looking at your site and you're creating lots of transformations to help out with that time, yes, that is something where we can always just let that period eventually move past and then you are going to be in a better state with after that period. Yeah. Well, I think that covers it. So. If you have additional questions about your transformations, the best way to do that is by sending us a ticket. Now, of course, you can always ask Marissa by name and she'd be happy to help you out. But also know that we have amazing customer success representatives that are willing to work with you to make sure that you're optimizing your sites, your projects, your apps for these transformations and making sure that we're keeping your quotas as slim or as large as you need them to be. So please don't don't be shy. Open tickets with us. You can either email us at support at cloudinary.com or you can also log into our portal to open a ticket as well. And we have pretty much 24-7 coverage of support. We try and answer you as fast and as best as we can. So please feel free to talk to us anytime. Excellent. Well, thank you guys for your time. Thank you, Marissa, for your time. Thanks, Sam. Yes. <laughs> and we hope to see you using the Cloudinary service. Talk soon.